Uh, Principal Troy Cody from Davies High School here, uh, still cheering for the Cowboys. Uh, just, I wanted to take some time here real briefly uh, and, and share the up-to-date information that we have uh, for families, uh, students and parents, and just hopefully answer some questions that maybe have been you know, lingering in your mind and whatnot. So the first is, uh, if you haven't already, today our school was opened. Uh, we'll be open up for about another hour here till about 2.30. Students, you still have the opportunity to come in and, and uh, grab whatever personal items you have, uh, musical instruments, et cetera. If for whatever reason you get this late or it didn't work out for you, you can certainly give our office a call uh, at the number here, 446-5605, and set that appointment up to come in and pick up those personal belongings. We understand that maybe today didn't work out for families, but uh, we can't guarantee that our school will be available uh, moving forward beyond today or, or perhaps later this week. I wanted to uh, take a little bit of your time here to explain what this virtual learning plan looks like for families. Beginning on Monday, uh, next Monday, uh, March the 30th, now there's going to be a little bit of uh, discrepancy there because Fargo Public is asking to start at the on the 30th virtually. Our governor obviously has a suspended school indefinitely until the April 2nd, so they're working out the details of those two dates. So stay tuned in that. But in, in either case, Fargo Public Schools is going to begin delivering school online virtually. Uh, teachers have been just extremely hard working this week, this week to try to convert those lessons into really meaningful and relevant online lessons and in every classroom. No matter what classroom you're in, no matter what class you've taken, each of our teachers are converting their uh, lessons to online virtual learning. Uh, they will be providing that uh, le that education in two different ways. Uh, the synchronous uh, lessons, which would be live, uh, students would, would remotely join that discussion in a live setting, where on the flip side, it would be asynchronous. So the teacher would record the lesson and then uh, present it uh, similar to what I'm doing right now at, at a later date and time for teachers to uh, uh, give students the opportunity to view it at a later date. Um, again, just wanted to make sure that uh, inside Fargo Public Schools lessons, uh, they are is re uh, an attendance. Uh, we are required to take attendance, and teachers will be sharing that process with uh, students uh, when they when they roll that out uh, ne next week. Students need to fully understand that. In, in this, I can't stress this enough. If you have been somebody who has not necessarily uh, spent a lot of time on your email, or you haven't had it uh, part of your daily routine. That needs to become a part of your daily routine. When we move to this virtual online plan, uh, students and teachers will be communicating quite extensively through email and virtual experiences. So again, if you are somebody who has not developed the habit of the daily or if not hourly check that email, you're gonna need to, to build that into your, into your new routine. And then also be checking that EDUCAL. That's the platform that we have teachers do all of their lesson planning on, and you need to develop that as an opportunity uh, for you to understand what's expected of you each and every day. If you have technical needs, 446-1440 uh, would be the number that the Fargo Public Schools has uh, established for students to, to call if there's a technical issue. Uh, but I would say that you first should probably check with your internet connection. Maybe it's a modem or something on your end. Uh, and then when you are sitting uh, in those live sessions, we want you to be aware that if you have other siblings uh, streaming, uh, maybe a Netflix movie on, or they're downloading a game, that could definitely substantially uh, take a little bit of hit on your broadband. And then finally, use your friends. I mean, your, your friends uh, would be able to be uh, helping you out. Sometimes they maybe they've experienced that same technical issue. So before you uh, log up that uh, phone number, that 1450 phone number, utilize those uh, options that I've asked you to do before that. Here's the daily schedule. If you look and see on Mondays and, and Wednesdays, periods one, three, five, and seven will be taking place. So if you're a student that has a period one or a three or a five or a seven, the expectations are that you would be in school virtually on Monday and Wednesday from 8.30 to 12.15. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll go with our even hours. So periods two, four, six, and eight, they would be online from 8.30 to 12.15. If you notice at the bottom there, from 1 to 2.30 every day, we will have office hours. So our teachers would be remotely available for answering of questions and perhaps uh, providing some additional help for students that have reached out and, and are spending some time uh, providing uh, maybe a smaller group uh, session. Uh, and then if you notice on Friday, 
Uh, we will uh, uh, allocate Friday for our teachers to be uh, collaborating with one another, uh, talking about how that lesson went, uh, and then quite honestly planning for that next week. And so we're really uh, excited about this schedule. We know it's not perfect, but we are going to do our very best given the circumstances to really, I think, deliver uh, the best that we can, a very high class education virtually. If you know somebody that does not have the internet, I want to take this just this brief moment to uh, have them indicate that they can call MIDCO at the number provided there, and then to use the code uh, M-I-B-E-D-U, so M-I-B-E-D-U 20, to have uh, MIDCO work with them to get internet into their household. Um, teachers uh, will be delivering this virtual experience. The question is, is how? Well, we are gonna ask students that everything that they do starts on the Educal or that daily planner. And then teachers will be delivering that through Google Classrooms, Google Meet, these recorded sessions that are offered uh, asynchronously uh, later uh, on in the week, uh, and maybe a Google Chat, would, which would offer this, uh, this live Q&A back and forth messaging between teacher and student, and then quite honestly, this live teaching lesson through this Zoom experience. And if for whatever reason, you're not able to uh, view it in that live setting, uh, all of those Zoom sessions will be recorded and students can view them at a later date and time. Uh, I do wanna just to remind you that everybody is absolutely doing their very best. Uh, we are using kind of this analogy, we're building the plane in the air. And uh, I just wanna give a super huge shout out to our teachers in all of the Fargo Public Schools. They've been amazing to work with, uh, just their dedication and commitment has been just uh, something that I am super proud of. Uh, those teachers here at Davies High School, uh, have, they are doing everything they can to really, I think, hold students to a relatively a, a high level of rigor in, in given the, the context of what we're all experiencing at this very difficult time. Here's that uh, topic about synchronous and asynchronous. You're gonna see and hear teachers talking a little bit about this. And I wanted just to provide a basic kind of definition so that we know if it's a synchronous learning or online, it's video, it's, it's, it's real time. Uh, there is some ongoing uh, discussion back and forth between teacher and student. And then uh, asynchronous would be this learning experience or capability for remote communication and assessment, emailing, uh, just this idea of re recording a session and then, and then playing it back at a later date and time. Uh, so those are two terms educationally that, that will be uh, really uh, what I think happening uh, for the remainder of the school year, if not, uh, uh, hopefully we get back sooner, but uh, synchronous and asynchronous learning. Students, you still have some roles and responsibilities, and I want to be very clear about that, is that you just need to establish a daily routine and be engaged in that learning process. You need to identify a space in your home where you can work in it effectively, uh, work and in, in be productive. Students that are participating in those live Zoom sessions, uh, there is some that, those options that are real-time online learning. Uh, be, be conscious of your, of your microphone. Is it muted? Is it, is it not muted? You have a younger brother screaming and crying in the background or, you know, is the dog barking and just some of those experiences that you really need to be paying just a little closer attention to as well. And remember that we still do need in, indeed need to follow the school dress code. Um, but just uh, when you submit those uh, lessons to those teachers, I want you to be very conscious of that Eagle uh, academic integrity. Uh, we know that when you go to a virtual experience that uh, gives you lots of opportunities to share work with others and, and perhaps copy and paste and all of that. And we just would ask that when your head hits the pillow each and every night, that you are demonstrating that Eagle integrity and that work truly is yours. And then make sure that you're proactively communicating with your teachers. If you're not able to sit in on one of those live sessions, communicate, let them know that you've got other responsibilities uh, in, in your own household and that, that you'd have to view that a little bit a later uh, point in time, just communicate that to your teacher. But let's be very clear. You absolutely still can re receive zeros on assignments. Teachers are gonna be assessing that work daily. Uh, your attendance will be monitored and recorded. Again, that process for taking attendance, there'll be a little Google form that you'll be asked to fill out each and every day, uh, recording your attendance and a small little exit ticket. Uh, that will be absolutely monitored and, and students will be held accountable to their attendance. There is this expectation that when possible, you do participate in those live teaching Zoom sessions. Uh, you do have school responsibilities. This is not a time to be playing video games or, or watching Netflix, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can do that uh, throughout the course of your evenings. But again, when we start next Monday or as late as next Wednesday on April 2nd, students, you do have school responsibilities. 
Um, yes, we, we need to be in constant communication. We understand that there are so many different unique situations out there. If your family uh, situation does not allow for you to participate in school uh, or during those given dates and times, just be in strong communication with your team. Grading, we are sur uh, still going to be using the power school setting. Uh, we are gonna be converting the third and the fourth quarter into a semester grade of 100%. Uh, we know there's a lot of students that have missing work. And so we, we have decided to give teachers really that opportunity and that autonomy to say that, you know what, if, if you have seen enough evidence from that student, we would ask for, for you to consider to exempt all of that missing work. Uh, but if indeed there was not enough evidence and the teacher just doesn't feel like they've seen enough work from the student to provide a, a letter grade, that they would then create a separate assignment and work very specifically with that student. So if you are a student who has missing work from that third quarter, uh, reach out again through those good email practices and, and uh, the daily routines. Stay in communication with your teacher. Ask about that uh, that missing work and they will work out a plan with you individually. If you are a student with a, with a 504 or an IEP, uh, that you need to know that every single one of our decisions with those students with IEP, uh, who, who's on an IEP will be made on an individual basis and be consistent with the federal IDEA law. Uh, and we'll work in, uh, we're working very closely with the North Dakota Department of Instruction's Office of Special Education Guidelines and students on a 504 or an IEP should remain in good communication with their case manager during this closure time. We will still be conducting IEP meetings and all of that information uh, will be uh, given to you through your child's uh, case manager. Parents, uh, if you have any questions on, on any of your special education needs and questions, don't hesitate to reach out to your case manager via phone call or, or an email. These uh, locations uh, are the meal distribution spots and I wanna uh, let you know that it has expanded this week. Uh, there are six locations. And uh, just as recently as yesterday, over 600 meals were distributed across our city. And, and that's exciting because we know that this is a super need for so many of you. And so just locate wherever you're at, uh, at that given time. You don't have to necessarily, just because you're in the Davies district, you have to uh, pick up your meal at a Davies location. You can pick it up at any of the remote locations. Uh, every child ages one through 18 is, is eligible to pick this up. Uh, there's no questions asked. You don't have to have a student ID. The only requirement is that indeed, that if you're gonna pick up three meals that you have three students ages one through 18 when you do pick up that specific meal. And that's offering a breakfast, if you notice in the morning and lunch in the afternoon. All school events are postponed at this time. We know that these are super important to you as a student and to us as a school, all of these spring activities Prom, National Honor Society, Davies Day. Uh, unfortunately, we just have we don't have enough information at this point in time, so they are all suspended. And we do hope to attempt to reschedule these events if and when we do return to school. Um, and so, just sit tight on that. Uh, keep our fingers crossed uh, because we know that this is super important to so many of you as it is to us here at Davies High School. If you are an AP student, I wanted just to put a quick plug in for students that are AP students. Please visit the AP College Board website for additional information regarding all of those AP tests and adjustments and modifications. And if you know that they are now uh, re, uh, giving free review sessions that, that are being offered. And just obviously, I want to throw a plug out there for the Cowboys because you need to take everything in moderation. Uh, except awesome. You can never have too much awesome during these crazy times. I certainly uh, miss seeing everyone. It's been great to see kids in and out of the building today, uh, just the laughter in our hallways and our commons. Uh, but yet we know that the, these are really some super important times for us to social distance, uh, distance ourselves. Uh, but we know uh, in, the, in the near future, we'll be able to see each other very soon again in person. Uh, students and parents are encouraged to give us a call, send us an email with any of your questions, uh, whatever you have, uh, just we will do our very best to, to answer it in a timely manner. So. Uh, just blessings to all. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay strong, uh, Davies High School.